All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, MetaMask API, a little intro to the MetaMask API. Show of hands, how many people in here are developers? Work with developer teams? Great. Um, so it's a little bit light on smart contracts, a little bit more on kind of uh, introducing people to the MetaMask uh, API. And even if you're not a developer, you'll see some like pretty cool little tricks in here to figure out how to trigger the MetaMask uh, through the API. So we're going to talk a little bit about, again, what is the MetaMask API? What's JSON RPC? Even as a new developer in Web3, I was kind of wondering what JSON RPC is, because um, I'd worked with other APIs in the past. Uh, it's, it's, it uses JSON, so I was very familiar with that. Essential tools, we'll talk about the docs and the playground. Playground's very cool. Uh, even if you're not a developer, you can go on to the MetaMask API playground and kind of test out the various methods that we uh, make available through the MetaMask API. And we'll give some examples of usage uh, RPC, and, and even have a few smart contract examples towards the end. So what exactly is the MetaMask API, right? So whenever you use a browser and you have an extension like MetaMask, what happens is you're getting a uh, window.ethereum object inserted into the browser. And uh, so one thing that you can do is you can go into the developer tools. So if you're in like Chrome, you can right click and hit inspect and open up the developer tools. And there's like a sources and page. And you can go in there and you can see that MetaMask is installed by the little cloud icon. And you'll see MetaMask there. And if, if that's there, then you know, one, it's installed, it's not disabled, and that the, uh, the Ethereum object is ready to go. Um, another thing that we can do is we can open up the console. And we can just start playing around with making requests to MetaMask. So we can do an await, because it's uh, an async method. But we can call window.ethereum request. And we can pass a method that MetaMask uses, one of its API methods. And for this one here, we're just going to try and get the chain ID. And so we don't need to pass any parameters. This is a really cool one to play around with. It doesn't trigger the MetaMask, uh, but it'll actually give you a result back, which is the chain ID. Right here, I was using Polygon mainnet. So it's 0x89 or 0x89. That's the uh, hex value for the uh, Polygon mainnet. Um, if you wanted to use like something like Chainlist, you can actually see all of the different networks and what their chain IDs are. And if you wanted to use a tool like eSerialize, you can actually convert those numbers over to hex or the other way around. So these are pretty cool little tools. And I'm going to have a, a link of resources at the end that have all this stuff in it. And it goes deeper into all the things that I'm talking about. So the MetaMask API, you've seen some ex simple examples so far. Um, now we're going to talk about some tools to help explore the MetaMask API. So, uh, the MetaMask API allows interac extra, uh, sorry, interaction with the uh, wallet so that you can sign transactions, sign messages, read and write data to the Ethereum blockchain. And you can also add or switch um, to the Ethereum network that you want the user to be connected to. So by default, MetaMask uses an Infura node, but also know as a user of MetaMask, you can switch out that provider at any time and use something else. Um, if you're maybe from Venezuela or something like that, we've had issues with this in the past. And, and if it's not working, you can literally just change the provider and use a different provider. In short, the MetaMask API, again, lets you interact with that MetaMask, uh, and in turn, the Ethereum blockchain via the JSON RPC uh, and then Ethereum provider. So what is JSON RPC? This is a question that I was asking when I was a new uh, Web3 developer. So JSON RPC is a transport agnostic remote procedure call, or RPC. It's basically just an API that uses a JSON format. And when communicating with the JSON RPC server, you're sending just regular JSON data, despite how the server was built or what language or platform that it was built on. This is super convenient as a developer. It means no matter if we send over uh, HTTP or WebSockets or Pony Express or what have you, we're always sending JSON, which is approachable to all developers. And for devs just getting into Web3 and you're wanting to build on the DAP layer, the few things that you need to be familiar with are like JavaScript, TypeScript, uh, some basic Web2 concepts, understanding smart contracts, and of course, JSON RPC. So it's easy to use. JSON RPC is simple to use. Here we have a typical request and response format. This is all you're doing basically with a JSON RPC server. You're putting together this request that's on the left-hand side. Forget the first two, ID and JSON RPC. You have a method, which is chain ID, and then some params usually. We're leaving it blank here. And as you can see on the right is the response, and you have that OX1. So that would be mainnet. That would be I'm connected to mainnet right now. And I can use that information as a developer and do something with that. 
Here is a, an example of like a custom RPC that maybe I might have built for my team. And maybe it lists all the Ethereum chains or other chains. And uh, maybe for the params, I want to either uh, give a number there for the number of results I want back, or maybe I want to specify what chains by number I want back. But either way, the result on the right would be something similar you would see in either of those situations, where I can pass like an array back with all the different chains. Here, there's only one, because I didn't have enough room on the slide. But imagine if there were a bunch of different chains there. Um, so it's super easy to use, very basic. Even people that are really not developers can get started with it, and it's not too hard. What is the ID and JSON RPC thing for? Well, the ID that says 0 right now, if you're only making one request, you can just leave it as 0 or 1. But that's a unique ID so that the client can relate responses back uh, from the originating request. This is in the case that you want to make like, more than one request, uh, or batch requests. Um, and then the JSON RPC, that's just the version of JSON RPC that you're using. It's 2.0 right now, so that would stay the same for almost every request that you make. Um, if you're working in JavaScript, it's super easy to call an RPC endpoint using the window.ethereum object in your DAP. That's connected to MetaMask or maybe even some other type of wallet. As you see here, we just set up a request that's an object. Uh, and we're just going to pass in that method again, like we've seen over and over here. <laughs> JSON RPC um, is simple. These are uh, MetaMask methods. But if you created your own RPC endpoint, uh, there's a few limitations to naming, but you can pretty much name that method whatever you want to. You definitely wouldn't want to start it with like RPC dot or a few other things, but um, yeah. And then here we get back, again, the same value that we're used to. Now, open RPC is something that I want to talk about. It's, a, it's something that a few people that have developed over on the MetaMask team, and I think more people should know about it. So open RPC is a specification that defines a standard programming language agnostic interface description. Yes, I'm reading here. Uh, for JSON RPC 2. It's an ADL. It's an API description language for JSON RPCs. But I think the better way to describe it rather than that is to say that OpenRPC, if you guys are developers, is kind of like Swagger, uh, right? But it's Swagger for JSON RPC. It's a spec. It's a tool. It allows humans and computers to discover and understand uh, the capabilities of a service. Um, it's an exchange of cap capabilities, if you want to say that. And um, we, we've basically defined an OpenRPC uh, if you define an open RPC, a consumer can understand and interact with a remote service with minimal implementation logic, and you can share logic patterns you know, across different use cases. Um, we're going to go over a few simple tools real quick for, for instance, testing JSON RPC servers, creating an open RPC spec, working with the MetaMask API, and interacting and, and working with smart contracts. So uh, when building with MetaMask, a, a good resource um, for the injected window Ethereum object is the um, Ethereum provider API docs. So here you can find out all about like the ETH underscore and wallet underscore methods that are supported by MetaMask. And you can check the uh, corresponding RPC API docs and find out all the information about those methods. Uh, methods that we call from our JS code, like uh, request accounts and add Ethereum chain and switch Ethereum chain, uh, not only do we have good talk documentation and sample code there, but we also have a MetaMask API playground. I really uh, would say if you're developing for MetaMask, you really should check out the MetaMask API playground. We're eventually going to work that into our docs, but until then, I'd go check it out and play around with it. Um, shout out to Chainlink. Um, they have a really cool thing called Chainlist, and uh, there's another thing called eSerialize, uh, Hexlify. These are all th good things for finding out what the IDs of all the different chains are and converting them over to hex and that kind of thing, really valuable resources for a developer. Uh, finally, there's a, a link there at the bottom, which I'll also show at the end of the slides, which will take you to a, a full list of all the resources and all the slides for this talk. I got to add the slides to it after the talk, but they will be there as well. So examples of usage. Let's get into some pretty good examples of um, the MetaMask Playground. So here's kind of what it looks like. Yeah, it's not that uh, fancy, but for a developer, this is what you need. Here are all the methods that are listed. And you can go into each one of them and kind of open them up and see what does the request look like? What does the response look like? And you can even try them out right inside the browser to kind of figure out how they work. Um, again, we have wallet underscore, ETH underscore, all the different uh, methods that you're probably used to using as a developer. Um, some of the main and, and popular, in my opinion, uh, methods are ETH accounts, which will get you the account of the wallet that you're connected to, chain ID, which we've already seen. We know how that works. 
Uh, wallet add Ethereum, wallet switch Ethereum chain. These are good for if your, your user comes to the, the dApp and they're not on the right chain, right? You want to switch them over to that. You don't want to make them have to do that themselves. So these are methods that you can use uh, with the MetaMask API to do that and give a better UX to your, uh, develop, or to your users. Um, this might be hard to see, and I'll, and I'll blow it up in a second here, but this is an example of when you kind of drill into that API playground on, for instance, the ETH accounts method. And let's zoom in here. So you can see on the left-hand side, just as we saw before, you have a, res uh, a request. And on the right is the response. That's the response that I got for mine. So that's, there's my wallet address. Um, but anyways, so you know, it's very easy to use. Even if you're not a developer, plug in the information on the left, hit the play button, you get the result on the right. And that can kind of inform you as a developer like what kind of information you're going to get back when you're inside and working with your, uh, J your JavaScript, your TypeScript code, whatever. Um, here's the, the ETH chain ID example, right? We already saw this one as well. Now, um, one of my other favorite uh, methods is the add Ethereum chain. It allows dApps to suggest a chain to be added to the user's wallet, and it's one of the most widely used methods. Uh, just specify a chain ID, and boom, uh, you'll either get back null if they reject it, uh, or sorry, null if they don't reject it, and you'll get back an error if it is rejected. Um, Here's what users see when they're adding that chain. And then there's also switch Ethereum chain. So you can use these two methods together in like a try catch statement so that you can kind of cover all your bases. And if they don't have the chain, you can add the chain. If they do have the chain, you can just switch the chain. That's what it looks like when you switch a chain with MetaMask. And this is kind of an example of that try catch I was talking about, where we're using two different uh, MetaMask API methods here. And basically, if they already have uh, the add, or if they already have the chain, it won't do the add. It'll just do the switch. Otherwise, it'll do both. Uh, one of our final examples is kind of like when you're minting an NFT. Let's say you have a smart contract that mints an NFT, right? Uh, that's going to probably trigger the MetaMask uh, on its own. So here's just a very basic example of a smart contract. We have a function that is public and has a uh, payable on it. So this is going to um, this is going to be a pe public method that is declared payable, so that it can receive ether into the contract. With this in place, we can call that function from our JavaScript, and so that would look uh, when we're using it. So this is a smart contract, and then in our JavaScript, maybe a React application, it would look something like this, right? We're importing some stuff uh, about our contract and about our provider and about our user, and then we have just you know NFT contract dot mint item. And we're get, you know, we have an address that we're passing in and a few different values here. And then we're just doing some basic asynchronous JavaScript to do what we want with the results of that transaction there. Here is the uh, resources at the end. So I know that this is very fast. It's kind of geared towards developers. But if you're getting into development, I would highly suggest going, checking out this link. I'll move out of the way a little bit here if you want to take a picture of it. Uh, the slides will be there. Um, and also, it'll go a little bit deeper into all these concepts that we're talking about. There's also some good user and UX videos on that page so that you can just learn as much as you want about MetaMask in one place and not to travel all over the internet to find that stuff. With that, I want to say thank you guys for coming out and watching my talk. Uh, my name is Eric Bouchard. <laughs> oh, one second. <laughs> I'm the DevRel Manager at Consensus and MetaMask. And um, yeah, uh, you can find me at HTTP Junkie on Twitter. Um, and if you want to DM me, uh, if you're a new developer, I'm a DevRel, so I'm always helping developers out. And uh, yeah, let me know. Hit me up on Twitter. Thanks, guys.